All right, this is Derek Briggs, your friendly Facebook pastor. I'm here with some weekly wisdom. I pray that all is well and that today finds you in the best health mentally, physically, and spiritually. Before we get started, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to enter into your presence. And God, I ask that you would bind anything that is not of you. I pray for maximum understanding, maximum revelation. Pray that you would open their eyes that they may see, open their ears that they may hear and apply your word in their lives in jesus name we pray in the name of yeshua amen okay so today we are talking about the children of god we're talking about the children of god now let me say this before we get started i know that someone is going to say that jesus only came for the jews you worship well ye know not what we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. That's what the scripture but says. What these people fail to understand is that something took place. We find it in John 1. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Who we're talking about? We're talking about Jesus. But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Yes, salvation was of the Jews, but he came to the Jews and they rejected him. So it says, as many as accepted his son, Christ, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. So belief in Christ is the qualifier to become a son of God. Now, Paul is going to explain this in Ephesians chapter 3. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So what Paul is saying is that this is a mystery this mystery was not known to them before. What is the mystery that 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 salvation would come to the Gentiles? In verse 2, he talks about grace because we have to understand that grace did what the law could not do. Grace did what the law could not do. I'm addressing the people that think that salvation is only for the Jews. The question would be, is this is this new? In Jeremiah 31, it speaks of God doing a new thing, a new covenant. Verse 33 says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. 
and I will be their God, and they will be my people. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. What is it talking about? It's talking about the Torah. Yeah, that word is the 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 um the Hebrew word Torah. But what does it mean? If you drop down, you see I have it circled there. When we get to D, it says instruction in messianic age. So what does it refer to? It refers to Christ. This refers to Christ. So it's not anything new. Okay. And yes, it says that I'm going to establish a new covenant with the house of Israel. Yeah, it was supposed to be with them. It was supposed to be because he was their promise. But because of their rejection of him, as a result of the Jews' disobedience, salvation became available to all. And then we're going to see all addressed in Galatians chapter 3. First, it's going to be to the Jews. But the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith which should afterwards be revealed. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Then he begins to address the Gentiles. For ye are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. How are ye all children of God? By faith. By faith in Christ Jesus is how you become the children of God. And then he addresses the church. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Why? Because the promise was given to Abraham. So notice to the Jews, to the Gentiles and to the church. Remember I said last week how Paul always addressed three peoples. You know, the uh, Gentiles would be those that uh, in the Old Testament did not have God or did not worship the true and living God. But when we get to the church, the church is neither Jew nor Gentile. And that's why the scripture says that there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So now watch this, because I, I want you to really understand what's taking place here. Jesus was told that his mother and his brethren were outside. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak to him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So Jesus answer was my family is going to be whoever does the will of my father, which is in heaven. See, they were speaking physically carnally they said your physical family is outside and she said well who is my family because jesus would always ask spiritual questions to those that were physical right so he's asking a spiritual question here and he says spiritually is only going to be those who do the will of my father which is in heaven then he gives us the greatest example of this at the cross. John 19 verse 26 says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. 
Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his home. Okay. Now the question is, why is Jesus telling his mother, this is your son, to the disciple? And why is he telling the disciple, this is your mother? Because you have to understand that Jesus was a Jew, so his mother would have been a Jew. Did Jesus have uh, siblings? Well, Matthew 13 and 55 says, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? So that means that Jesus had siblings. If it was about the physical relationship, the carnal relationship, then there would have been no need for Jesus to say that this is your son. Okay. What do they have in common? They all do the will of his father. His mother was a believer. His disciple was a believer. So he demonstrates this right here. That it's not about that, that natural um, citizenship. No, it's not. This is spiritual. Okay. So watch this. When we understand the children of God equation, when we understand the children of God equation, it's going to be Jews plus Gentiles time Christ equal children of God. That's going to be your equation. Let's let's go through the details of this formula. Ephesians chapter two, uh, verse verse 14, for he is our peace. Who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of petition between us. So he made the Jews and the Gentiles one people. That's what this scripture is telling you. He made them be one people. How did he do that? Verse 15 says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So of two different people, he made one people in himself. Now, this is, is, is Colossians uh, 2 and 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. This is what I talked about last week, and that uh, that handwriting here is chaographing, and it means an acknowledgement of debt. So he blotted out the handwriting that was against us. He took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross. It is finished. Okay. Now, what are these 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 ordinances that it's talking about? Right. Having abolished in his flesh the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Good question. It's referring to Deuteronomy 12. Deuteronomy 12 and 1 says these are statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye shall live upon the earth. This is referring to the Mosaic law. The Mosaic law was statutes and judgments without getting too deep into it. Ten commandments were ten moral laws. Uh, the, the, the Mosaic law was 613 laws that were statutes and judgments that they did only in the promised land. OK, once they once they uh, once they entered into the land because the land was a holy land, they had to observe these uh, these laws because they were inside of this holy land. OK, so. And this is what Jesus was explaining in Matthew 5 uh, in 17, 17 and 18, when he says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, whatever you do, 
please understand the difference between a fulfillment and a continuance. Fulfill means to complete, not to continue. So a lot of people that um, that tries to hold on to the law, tries to hold on to the old covenant, tries to follow Christ and hold on to the old covenant, it cannot be done. Okay, so because what you have to understand is that Jesus is saying that he's the fulfillment of the of the the law. The law was about him. The law led you to him so that he can fulfill it. And that's what he's saying. He's not saying I'm continuing. I'm following the law. He's saying that I'm the fulfillment of the law. And that's why you have a new covenant, because he fulfilled the law and gave you a new covenant. OK, the law, no man is justified by the works of the law. The just shall live by faith. Grace and truth came through Jesus, not the law. OK, so I hope that makes sense, that that part there. OK, so let's get back to Ephesians 2. Verse 14 says, for he is our peace who had made both one and had broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man. So make him peace. Verse 16, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Now, this is Colossians 1 and 20. It says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So Jesus work on the cross settled the sin issue. Verse 17, and came and preached peace to you, which were off and to them that were nigh. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the father. Now, the amazing thing about this it, it, that we need to understand is that you'll always hear me saying this. Everything is about Christ. And since everything is about Christ, you can hold on to a nationality all you want. You can claim to be the real God's chosen people all you want. But Christ is the door. Christ is the way. Christ is the one that through his body, through the cross, he made one man. So with all that you're claiming and want to hold on to, then what? What does that do for you? Does that allow you to bypass Christ? Because if not, if it doesn't allow you to bypass Christ, then in order for you to come become a son of God, you have to go through Christ. Let's continue. So Jesus is the filter. He is the deciding factor of identification. What is this? Where do we end up? We end up with Romans 2. Verse 28 says, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. What Paul is explaining is that your nationality does not make you a Jew. It's not about the outward. Neither is the outward circumcision. No. No. He's saying that in order to be a Jew, the real Jew is going to be inwardly. And the real circumcision is that of the heart, because this is what the spirit does. The spirit sanctifies our heart daily, our life daily. You see, so it's not about the physical. It's about the spiritual. So understand this salvation is still of the Jews. Uh oh. But it switched from being physical to spiritual. Oh, oh, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, one thing that we understand about the the switch between the law and the in the in the in the new covenant, the law was all 
physical. They had to physically do these things. They had to physically offer that sacrifice, right? Right? They had to physically understand the difference between what was clean and, and, and unclean. But when we get to Christ and the new covenant, there is going to be a switch from physical to spiritual. Everything becomes spiritual. That sacrifice that they had to physically go and find, bring these animals, became present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, they had to physically go to the priest who physically went before God. That could physically one day a, a year on Yom Kippur go before God. No more. When Christ was crucified, they say that the, the veil was, was torn from top to bottom. And since the veil was torn from top to bottom, we no longer had to go to the priest who went to God on our behalf. That gave us access to God, direct access. And this was done by way of, of Christ because of the cross. That's so you went, you still went from physical to spiritual, right? You understand that? Even when you look at the, when you look at the, the give you an example of the woman that was caught in adultery. She was caught in adultery. So according to the law, she was supposed to be killed. But Christ said, if you look at a woman in lust, in your heart, you've already committed adultery. So wait, under the law, they had to physically do it. Christ said, all you have to do is thank it. So you're still going from physical to spiritual. You see? And that's why he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And circumcision is not of the, 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 the body. It's of the heart by way of the Holy Spirit. So you become a Jew spiritually, inward, by way of the Holy Spirit. Okay? I hope that that makes sense. The Bible is clear. Uh, in, in the instructions that we should not be deceived. Do not be deceived. The only way that you cannot be deceived is you have to know the truth. You have to know what the Bible uh, says. You have to know what the Bible declares, what it commands of you. Because if you don't know what the Bible commands of you, then you're going to be following as those that try to hold on to the Old Testament. You can't follow two covenants. You have to choose which one are you going to follow. There's one that was before Christ came that they were pretty much condemned under that one. All of them were guilty. And then there's one as a result of him coming and freeing you from the law. No longer guilty. You're free. You understand the difference? So... You, if you accept Christ, then you have to accept his covenant. I've heard people say so many times, you can't understand the, the new without, I'm saying, no, that's, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. It's all well and good to go back and understand what was happening then. But if you follow Christ, he's going to give you everything that you need. Christ is all you need. You can listen to everything that he said and be spiritually perfect. And be able to receive salvation just by listening to him, being a part of his covenant, not what happened before him. OK, so I hope that. And, and as a matter of fact, I think the next teaching I'll do the commandments of, of of Christ, because Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So what are his commandments? We'll we'll talk about that the next time. OK, so let's pray. Father, I, I, I ask that you will forgive us of our sins. I, I pray for your grace. I pray for your guidance. I pray that you will give us all that we need in order to be perfect so that we can also be able to strengthen one another, that we can come together on one accord and be worthy of your love and exemplify your grace that you've given us and your love that you've shown to all of us. I pray that we become the best stewards of, of salvation that we become the perfect example, that we become the light of the world, that we become the salt of the earth for all that believe, all that want a reason of hope, for all that are 
sick, that are in need of a healing, in need of peace, that are broken, that are lost. I pray that we become that source of strength, that source that fulfills their need. And to whoever it is that is listening to the sound of my voice, that says that I want to give my life to Christ. I want to become uh, the children of God, a child of God. Well, all you have to do is confess your sin. Believe that God has sent Jesus to die for you. And not only did he die for you, but that God raised him up. He was raised with all power and authority. And make him Lord of your life and you shall be saved. That's all you have to do. So I pray for your obedience. I pray for your submission. I pray that you surrender your will to Christ. All these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I will see you guys next week.